So I am going to uh, call the meeting to get uh, to order. This is the virtual public hearing on the tentative budget and appropriations ordinance. Uh, Susan, can you take the roll, please? Uh, let's see. Let's see. Carolyn, Karen, Carolyn. Here. Diane. Here. Patty, I don't see. Linda. Here. Kim. Here. And Sue gave previous notice. Great. All right. So we are going to, uh, I'm going to share my screen. And uh, I am going to try to get this flag up. And we are going to have the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. You did good tonight. <laughs> yeah, I did it. I know. I pledge allegiance to, yes, to the flag of the United States of America, 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 America to the republic, and to the republic for which, which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, liberty and, and justice, and justice, justice for, all. for all. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Keep that up for the next meeting. Uh, back here. Right. All right. Uh, the purpose of this meeting uh, is a public hearing to allow the public an opportunity to address the board regarding the 2020-2021 budget and appropriations for Susan, do we have any participants who would like to address the public uh, board on this? Uh, I just received a comment from Mr. McCula, so I'm printing that up. I don't right. see any hands up for the rest of the residents, but maybe they don't know that they're supposed to do that. Probably. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, Joseph McCula says, with the low number of items being checked out and no prospects of a quick rebound and with the present workforce and overhead, the cost per item being checked out is certainly over $100 each. As the pandemic subsides, who knows how many people will use the library. Many have found alternatives, such as purchasing books online, ebooks and tablets, etc. Many certainly will not come back witnessed by very low volume of use currently. The library should contact the 1,000 regular patrons out of 58,000 in the district and see if they plan to come back. Taxpayer subsidiz subsidization on this scale is not justified or fair. The new normal will certainly be greatly reduced circulation. Also, fewer persons will participate in programs. Downsizing of staff will have to happen because of reduced and uncertain circulation and programs have to be drastically cut or eliminated. This downsizing requires the trustees to cut the budget drastically and dip into their massive surplus so they can then cut the tax levy. That is the only written comment I have received. I still don't see any hands up. So. All right. Then uh, thank you, Mr. McCullough, and that uh, concludes uh, this uh, public hearing on the budget and appropriations ordinance. Uh, I make a motion to adjourn this meeting. Second. Thank you. Carolyn seconded it. Uh, Susan, can I have a roll call, please? Carolyn? Yes. Uh, Carolyn, Diane? Yes. Linda? Yes. Not, no comment, thank you. Okay. Uh, Tim? Yes. Okay. Meeting is All right. adjourned. Thank you very much. Meeting is adjourned. We will uh, proceed on to our next meeting. See you in a second. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> All right. Oh, now we leave. Well, uh, okay. We do have a quorum, and I think we can uh, start uh, the uh, regular board meeting, the July 15th, 2020. What, what I know best, meeting. and it's just an easy way to give back to your community and keep our public library going well. So, Linda, you're, you're not on mute. Okay. All right. Um, so, uh, Susan, could you call the roll, order, uh, roll, uh, roll call, please? Okay. Karen? Karen's on Karen. mute. Put your thumb up, maybe. Here, Karen's here. Carolyn? Here. Diane? Here. No Patty. Linda? Here. Tim? Here. And Sue gave previous notice. Great. All right, we are going to do the Pledge of Allegiance again, for those who were not at the previous meeting. 
I'm going to share my screen again if you want, Susan. Oh, you have to do the sharing. Um, I can unshare it, but I don't. I don't have access to your computer, so I cannot do that. Huh. Well, we but will I can stop attend. you. When I when I click on share screen, it says host disabled attendee screen. Oh, okay. Sorry, sorry. Let me fix that. So. I normally believe you, Susan, but in this case. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna mute myself because Patty's on the phone. <laughs> All right. All right, here we go. Back to here. Can you all see that? No. No, oh no. Wow. I see you. Huh. Oh, oh I gotta hit chat. Yes, yes. I see it. Very nice. Right. All right. Stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right, sharing has stopped. Wonderful. Okay, so uh, now we have uh, approval of minutes. So I make a motion to approve the minutes, uh, I'm sorry, the minutes of the virtual regular board meeting of June 17th, 2020. Can I have a second? People are muted. Diane seconded it. She waved her hand. All right. Uh, we'll go through uh, in order. And uh, if anybody's got any, uh, make a motion for any changes, you can do that. So Diane, you're first up on this. Uh, and you are muted. No, no changes. All right. Uh, Carolyn. Um, yes, I do have one on page, page three, director's report, paragraph seven. Um, Four, five, six, seven. All right. Sorry. Uh, okay. I'm looking for the terminology. I believe it's a motion to amend. Um, that's not my statement. Actually, um, I just wanted to amend it to what I said. What I did say, I'll read, um, if that helps. Trustee Derblick questioned safety concerns for staff and patrons returning to the building since the library has not received any documentation confirming it's safe to do so. She requested a document from Rails to the Niles Main Library confirming it is safe to do so. That's what I said. We have a second in uh, Carolyn's motion. I'm not seeing one. Uh, sorry, Carolyn, the uh, board is not accepting your change on that. Uh, okay, can you remove that? Because I didn't say that. You can't put it in there. I never said any of that. Well, I don't think it's in quotes. Trustee Derblick mentioned. I think that's good enough. So I'd mm. like it removed because that's the, I would, ne would have never said that. And I didn't. So it's going to have to be removed. You can't say well, I- it actually can't be removed unless there's a, a motion to amend the minutes. Okay, as amended. you can't falsify the minutes. All right, uh, make a motion you know, to remove this, it. I'm not trying to falsify that, that, the minutes, that, Carolyn. Sorry. Carolyn has it. Carolyn, make a motion to remove it, please. I motion to remove the inaccurate statement by trustee of Trustee Derblick. And that's I'll the second. second it, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, the entire statement you want removed? Yeah, I didn't say any of that. That's fine. Uh, can I have a roll call on that, uh, Susan? Karen? No. Yeah. That was a Carolyn? yes. I couldn't hear. Karen, was that yes. a yes or no? That was a no. That was a no. Okay, are we playing a game here? There just was an internet, a lag in the internet, so it was a little garbled. He just was confirming. Carolyn, are you voting yes on this? I assume. I'm voting yes. On your motion. Right. Diane? I I abstain. I'm not clear on any of this. Well, it says the same thing. Linda? I'm sorry, can you state what we're voting on again? I'm sorry. 
I'm asking to remove the the statement by Trustee Derblick because I didn't say any of that. So they won't yeah, change yes. what I said. Thank you yes. so much. Okay, uh, Tim. Yes. All right, motion passes. Um, we missed the public comment, didn't we? Or is that, okay, Never mind. sorry, it's after this. Uh, public we, comment comes after the approval. Yeah. I'm not good at being Diane and me. Don't screw me thing. up here. Don't screw me up. All right, anybody, uh, Carolyn, are you finished with your changes for the uh, minutes? Yes, I am, thank you. You're very welcome. Uh, Karen, do you have anything? No, Linda, do you have anything? No, thank you. All right. Uh, so we're going to um, uh, we're making making amending the motion to approve the uh, amended minutes uh, of the regular board meeting um, virtual board meeting of June seventeenth, twenty twenty. Karen, you're muted, Karen. Sorry. Yes. Carolyn. I'm sorry, I missed it. What are we voting on? We're I was voting on to approve the amended minutes. All right, thank you, yes. Diane. Yes. Uh, Linda. Yes. Pam. Yes. All right, motion passes. Great. All right, uh, now we're entering into our public comment period. Uh, again, I want to remind everyone that public comments are limited to three minutes per person for a total of 30 minutes. This is an opportunity for the public to make a comment. This is not a time for questions and answers, nor an open debate. Members of the board or executive staff may elect to make a brief statement of clarification. All right, do we have any public comment? We have two written comments. The first one is from Mackie Jones. It says, um, I love Niles, I love the library, I want to love how the board votes on things tonight. Thank you. That's it. You're welcome. Thank you. And I have a quote from Mr. Yassel, a uh, comment from Mr. Yassel. Good evening, library board and staff. Monday's meeting was very informative. I would like to mention that since Greg said the ceiling leak might not be connected to a leaking roof, perhaps we can simply find the source of that specific leak for the time being and not jump the gun on going forward with a full roof replacement. On the agenda for tonight's meeting under number nine of new business, part B, it says for a 3.3% increase for the executive director's salary beginning July 1st, 2020, which is two weeks ago. According to public information of Director Lemke's 2018 salary of $132,790, that is a $4,382.07 increase, equivalent or higher than what Niles Mayor Andrew Shabillo gave himself as a pay increase not long ago. I hope to hear good reasoning for this agenda item from the trustees. Thank you for your time as always. Okay. Thank you, Steve. And then I see that Tisha Dowdy Ashcroft has her hand up. Susan? Uh, Greg yeah. has his hand up real quick. Yeah, uh, before we move on to uh, Tisha's public comment, I just want to address uh, something that uh, Mr. Yassel uh, stated. Um, I did not state that we did have a leak uh, in the ceiling. What I did say is that we are getting water into the uh, insulation on the roof that has not materialized as a leak and in the interior of the building. So what, you know, uh, I know it may be a fine point, but um, I want everybody to know that we do not have any active leaks into the interior of the building at this point in time. And that's what I, that's all I want to say. Thank you, Greg. Uh, the next public comment. Did we lose Susan? Okay, I was muted and I also, and Tisha is also muted. Okay, Tisha can now speak. And is not letting me unmute her now. <clears throat> okay, can you hear me? Yep. Yes. yes. Excellent, okay. Tisha Dowdy Ashcroft, a long time now as resident. Uh, please get out of your magic bubble and read the room. There's a pandemic going on. 
Ple uh, people are broke due to businesses closing, wages being cut, and furloughs, etc. The park district and the village have furloughed full and part-time employees and have put a freeze on raises for administrators. The library director's pay raise will be on the backs of the taxpayers. Thank you. Thank you. Any further public comments? Nope, no more. Nope, great. Uh, all right, the next item on the agenda is the president, uh, I'm sorry, trustee reports. Wait, can, can I say something too to address what Tricia just said? Yes. We all got our tax bills and if you notice the library line item, um, we have given a million dollar abatement to the um, whole district. So I wish you would look at your tax statement and see it's quite a bit of money that is being given back to you from the library. Thank you, Danny. Thank you. All right. Okay, the and next Tim, I, Tim, I do have one more person has their hand up, someone named Laura. Okay. Hello, Laura. I just want to let you know I'm here as a Niles uh, interested citizen. Thank you. Okay, you're thank welcome. you, Laura. Glad you're here. All right. I think we're done with public comments. Uh, the next item on our agenda are trustee reports, kind of going back to that. Um, not, not much from my end, uh, though I did want to mention that I have embraced overdrive and digital downloading during this time and on my Kindle. And I never thought I'd move away from physical books, but I am enjoying it. And hopefully once the library fully opens and we can get our materials back, uh, I can go back to regular books. But yes, the digital download has, has worked for me. Um, does anybody else want to make a comment at all? This is a time for, as we had. Yes, Karen. I just want to join in that. Uh, I don't really like reading books digitally, but it's at least a way to get books. So I'm glad we have that option. I'm looking forward to going back to regular books. But in the meantime, I have, uh, through the library's help, uh, been able to use Hoopla. I had a lot of technical problems to begin with. And OverDrive, I'm now using. Still have some technical problems, but in any event, it's a good fallback uh, if you, when you can't get the actual books. But actually, I have a quick question for uh, Susan Lemke. So can, uh, I've gotten some notices that I have books that are coming in. Would those now be available in the section where we can pick up books yep. since the library is open as of today? Yep. Excellent. Thank you very much. So we don't have to make appointments to go in anymore to pick up books. No. Is that correct? No, it's uh, just you have to come between the, the correct hours is all. Right. That's, yep. that's great. Thank you very much. Any other trustee you want to make any statements? No? Wonderful. Uh, we don't have Patty. Uh, Greg, are you giving us a brief uh, treasures report, or are we skipping that? Uh, certainly. Hey, uh, um, oh, I'm sorry, Linda. You know, I'm sorry to interrupt, but Patty's okay. trying to get on. I just want to let you know she's having a problem. Oh, okay. So I'm going to try to get her in. If she comes in as a um, not a trustee, please let her in the meeting. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I'm happy to do that. Uh, uh, since that's the case, do you want to wait until... Yeah, we can go back to that one. Two minutes, yeah. Right. Um, let us uh, move on to the payment of bills. Uh, so I make a motion to approve the operating expenses of $295,131.32, payroll expenses of $280,874.10, Special reserve expenses of $2,578 for a total monthly expense of $578,583.42. Do I have a second? Second. Karen second. Second. seconded. Great. Do we have any uh, comments on this motion? We can start with Diane. No comments. No comments. Carolyn? No questions. No, thank you. All right. Very good. Karen? Hold on. No. Nope. Linda? No. Nope. All right. Okay. I don't have any comments on this either. So, uh, Susan, you can take a roll, please. 
Karen? Yes. Carolyn? No. Diane? Yes. Linda? Yes. Tim? Yes. All right, motion passes. Do we get Karen? Yeah, she was first. Oh, she was. Okay, thanks. So um, I'm seeing Laura still on our screen. Is she? I can't get rid of people once they have had the chance to talk. Oh, all right. But she does, it ma does it matter? I mean, no, it does. I was just wondering. Oh, I just, was just oh, a okay. Yeah, I did. Oh, I no, I'm just. Me. I just asking. Susan, yeah. it's Linda. Yeah. Could you do me a favor. Could you just send? Patty, the link again, so I she. No, I don't think I can. I can't. I know I, I can't get out either to send it. Okay. Right. All right, I'm trying. I, I'll try. I'll see if I can edit. But it, yeah, it's, it used to let to. me edit during a meeting, and now it has stopped letting me do that. So it's just making it a lot harder. She just needs to go to our website and use the public link. So we can't shrink this screen and go into something else. Here. I'm going to log yeah, out and then get the link to Patty. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Linda. I have to log out. Hey, can't you shrink the screen and go in? Yeah, you should just be able to go over to your Chrome and open up. Yeah, your right. And forward the oh, yeah. See? Yeah. Yeah, yeah you don't have to get out of the meeting. You don't need to hang out right. or shut out. Right. Well, she, I mean, she right. was in, she's in her email, but she wasn't finding the link. I used to be able to um go and edit the panelists and be able to resend links during the meetings and it won't let me do that anymore they've made okay, some I'm modifications to zoom and oh. it has stopped doing that now so the great upgrades <laughs> <laughs> uh, well I'm, i feel for patty uh, yeah I'm okay sure so we did that number. okay so susan uh next item is our director's report okay i have to remember to be susan instead of diane for a minute yeah. Um, I just wanted to uh, let you know that in the trust in the um, trustee calendar, I am missing an item, which is the Chamber of Commerce 2020 golf outing. Um, it, and so the, I believe my understanding is that the golf part is uh, they actually are playing real golf in person on a golf course on August 18th. But the lunch. Um, it's a virtual, a virtual, the, their box lunches with, for the golfers, and then the dinner is a virtual awards dinner. So a $30 Niles Chamber gift card to purchase dinner uh, so that you can attend the virtual awards and the raffle. So. And that's on page 35 is our calendar, I believe. Yep. So just uh, for August okay. 18th, that is August 18th. Okay, another that's thing. So right. missed that and I wanted you to know. I did also hear from Alicia that um, the Niles Night of Roses will also be virtual. They had moved it to, I think it's October and it, it, it's going to be a virtual event as well. Because there's no way to do it with the 50 person cap. Sure. Um, so I just wanted to let you know that we did uh, start letting patrons into the building. We've been doing it since June for the technology appointments, but now people can come in and pick out materials, use the self-checks, pick up their holds for themselves. Um, and then we also continued the no contact holds pickup for people that don't want to come in the building. And, you know, some people were pretty tentative about coming back in the building. So that is continuing. They appreciate that. So we had to rearrange everything. Uh, it took a lot of staff effort. There are many staff members that I could shout out to at this point, but I'd miss some and that would be sad. But um, but just a great effort went into making us ready for letting the patrons in the building. They, uh, I did the first greeting slot this morning and they seemed very appreciative. I didn't see a single person without a mask. Um, they, I think they're a little confused by the fact that we close every 45 minutes to clean. Um, but it, and it's it's an awkward schedule, but it does keep us from having a person plop down at the beginning of the day and stay the whole day, which is what we're trying. If they had yeah. COVID, you don't want them in the building for that long. So, um, so, but I think it went very smoothly. The staff all sounded like they were pretty happy with it. Um, they, they have done lots of displays, like in children's, there are these long tables that have stacks of books on them that are different 
um, different genres, you know, or like, you know, elephant and piggy books for the readers or, you know, just different things that somebody could come along and just grab, you know, without having to really browse yeah. a lot. There is Patty. There Seven. she is. Hi, Patty. Seven. So, Susan, can I ask you? Yes. How do you, how do you get rid of the people after 45 minutes? I don't understand. Uh, well, they, Rich, I understand, was here till 2 o'clock in the morning, or maybe he was working from home. I think, but I think he was actually physically here, um, getting a series of announcements put up. Oh. Athena, for the head of... Uh, Patron services recorded a bunch of announcements. And so they just run, you know, like every 10 minutes, it's reminding people to keep their mask up. Because a lot of people kind of start out with a mask and then it gets a little uncomfortable and then they kind of let start letting it slide. So, but people were so far fine. So it talks about that. And then not, then it starts sort of warning them that the library is going to be closing in 15 minutes. And so go oh. and take your stuff to the self check. And so I think, you know, a, a, I, I always like having that warm personal approach of letting people talk to a real person to check out if that's what they prefer. And of course, lots mm -hmm. of people really like that. But originally, those self checks were put in, at a, you know, and, and the whole automated materials handling was put in partly so that people could do their own checking out. So we are now able to kind of at least fall back on that. And they yeah. seem to be having a lot of success with it, especially because you went fine free. So, thank you. Good idea. Susan, can I just ask a question? Do you not have any, like, like you don't have a, a location with the shield? Should someone need to speak? Oh, yeah, yeah, them? we do. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, anybody oh, that wow. had trouble could still go to the desk and get some help. But, okay. you know, just trying to keep and that. And the, pay, the, the employees and they have the, yeah, the They have okay. these guards. These okay. guards okay. guards at most okay. of the desks. Okay, great, great. Yeah. yeah, we're not currently staffing all of the desks, so. Oh, no, I understand. No. Yeah. Patty? Okay. Betty, you had, you're, I'm you're, sorry, I missed part of this. So how is it, how are people coming in? Do they have appointments or, I read part of it, but I wasn't sure exactly yeah. for today. How, how do you do start? Well, we, we still have computer appointments or technology appointments, and the appointments are reserved for Niles residents, Niles, Niles main mm -hmm. library card holders, I should say. And... Um, so though, and then they have four slots for walk-ins. So the doors um, open like at nine o'clock and we do let people come in. We have a cap of 50 people, but we did not get close to that because people kind of were zipping in, grabbing stuff and heading right back out. So, <laughs> so they can go to the stacks or no? Yeah, they can go to the stacks. They also just, just went and Good. picked up their holds. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, they were really happy to be back physically in the building. And I saw lots of um, parents and kids, and is, and they were leaving with like big stacks of kids' books and stuff. That did my heart a lot of good. I was really happy to see that. So yeah, it's uh, I think I think, you know, I, I think people are very happy to be back in, and I think that we have done it cautiously oh, enough yeah. that the staff feels secure to be able to do it. So, isn't so that great? You know, especially for kids. Um, the time that we were sort of prevented from going into the library was a long time, but that seems like forever for a kid. So I'm really glad children and their parents are allowed back in and can load up a new children's book. I remember when my daughter was little, I got so tired of reading the same books over and over and over <laughs> right. again. So great. Yep. Yeah, I'm really happy about it. I mean, they were able to do the no contact holds pickup, but that's not at all the same thing as getting to come and pick your book yourself. <laughs> For, for an adult or for a kid. So um, that's been occupying most of our time, and I, but I'm really happy that it is up and running successfully. So, do you have any questions for me? I'm sure there are other things, but. Well, I, did, I was going to make a comment that congratulations on the John Cotton Award. Oh, yeah. That's Thanks. wonderful. For marketing? Yes. Yep. Marketing, yeah, excellent. Wow, $10,000, fantastic. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's really no, impressive. What yeah. are you going to do with the money? Uh, well, I don't, I don't know. We have not even discussed that. We just were so excited to win the award. And we don't yeah, have one yet. They I haven't see. given it to us yet. Nah. Oh. <laughs> just, <laughs> you know, so there's, no, there's no restrictions on this like there are in the grants we get. No, it's, that's it's wonderful. No, it's whatever you guys decide you want to do. Nice. Good. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I'm very, very proud of the marketing team. 
I do want to I also special. wanted to mention um, about Jason and his recordings. I was uh -huh. browsing through the internet the other day, and I just happened to come to hear him singing. He's got a wonderful voice, and it's I was just a pleasant surprise. Nice. Thank you. Yeah, he did that whole thing himself, all the editing, and yeah, uh, he's yeah. he is remarkable. Yeah, he works in digital services. Yeah. If you haven't ever met him, very very nice. Yeah, yeah I've worked. Thank with you. you. Yeah. Thank I, you, Diane. I want to make a uh, uh, a thank you out to Roberta for the uh, planters, uh, planting the flowers and the planters. So that's great. Here. Uh -huh. here, so thank you very much. And they did get the uh, planter by Stan's Memorial Bench planted this week as well. Cool. All right. Any other comments on uh, Susan's uh, report? Um, yeah. On page 32, the fact that about more than 5,000 items that were ordered were received. Yeah. I mean, that's an awful lot of work right there. Oh, my gosh. The staff is not working. <laughs> they are. Yeah, they are drowning back there. They are hustling. People really, I just see people just kind of in high gear a lot of the time. But, you know, they're getting the job done. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think technical services may need to hire some temporary help to clear the backlog, though, because they haven't started ordering since then. So, when, you know, they got to get rid of that stuff so that they can start getting the new stuff coming in. Mm -hmm. So I think, and then there are a lot of people that are looking for temporary work right now. So I think that will not be hard to do. And can any of the other staff be uh, um, uh, temporarily assigned to their you know, everybody has been pitching in. All of the departments have been uh, helping each other. So, you know, like we've all been pulling the pick holds. We've all been shelving. And then like Diane, my Diane, and um, several other people have been helping out with technical services, getting books processed and things like that. But um, but it's an overwhelming amount of material. And, and we're spread very thin over the four teams. So it's... Mm -hmm. They're really, it's very thin staffing right now. Yep, 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 yep. Yep. Uh, good job. Yeah, well, good job. Yes. Uh, all right, Pat, now that Patty's back here, uh, mm -hmm. you want to do your... I'm sorry. I really oh, am. It's fine. Oh, don't worry about it. We all have challenges. We all been there. <laughs> uh, at least I didn't inappropriately share my screen. Other than anything. Um, do you have it? Uh, we passed up your treasurer's report, so we can go back to that. That's fine. Whenever you're ready. Yeah, we're ready. Thank you. Okay, on July 15th. June is the 12th month of the fiscal year, 100% of our way through the year, <clears throat> through the budget, rather. The library's overall expenditures are at 73% of the total budget. Assets, um, Investment income is 181%, uh, replacement tax 118%, total revenues 106%, salaries at 98%, library materials 91%, total library operating expenditures 70% of the overall category it is well under budget. General administration is 87% over, uh, under budget. it's under budget. Uh, employee uh, fringe benefits is at 91%, a little under budget. Utilities, 90%, which is also a little under budget. Capital expenditures. Uh, at 11%, which is more than a little <laughs> under budget. Building and uh, equipment uh, maintenance uh, is below budget at 73%. And that's it. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure doing business with you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Anybody have any questions for? Uh, May I just make a, a just a little note, just so you understand that um, the capital expenditures is all money that was not levied. I, I know you all understand this, but there are a number of, of residents here, so that sure. that line being underspent at eleven percent that just means that that portion of the special reserve didn't get spent this year, and those costs will transfer to next year, but they don't get levied for. It's not like we're taxing people twice for something. 
just wanted to be clear about that. And of course, with the, uh, with the COVID pandemic, we just were not able to get the work done that we had hoped to do. Yep. Thank, you. Thank you. All right. Uh, so now we are moving on to number nine, new business. Uh, I'm a number, a, a letter A. I'm a, uh, making a motion to adopt ordinance 20-04, an ordinance providing for budget and appropriations of the Niles Main District Library, Cook County, Illinois, for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2020, and ending June 30th, 30th 2021. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Second, thank you, Patty. No All problem. Right. Um, so per our last meeting, we did uh, make a motion so that any trustee had any uh, specific questions, they should contact the staff um, in the inner in meeting, uh, inner uh, portion of the two meetings. So hopefully there's not a lot of questions. Uh, so we can go around the room and anybody's got any additional comments to make on the budget, we can address that now. We can start with, uh, let's start with Patty this time. Uh, do I have any questions pertaining to the budget? Or comments? No. You want to say no? No. Okay. All right, uh, Karen? Yeah, my questions were already answered. All right, thank you. Linda? Linda, you're on mute? No. No, okay, great. Diane? No, we had uh, quite a discussion last time, and I think uh, my questions were answered. Thank you. Great. Carolyn? Um, yes, I had a question. Um, I requested, let's see, how did I word this? Um, please provide me with the specific items and their costs that make up the budget categories which I attached. Um, I used the Excel spreadsheet from um, Greg or Susan, and there's a category called downloadables for $92,400. And I asked, if you could please provide the specific items and their costs under that category. So I got a, a request from Susan stating I said something completely different and that according to FOIA, she can't respond. So my statement was never even entered. The sentence you used is something I never said. It seems to be happening a lot with my correspondence. So I just wanted to mention that because um, if you're telling us we're spending $92,000 on downloadables, and I'm asking, please identify what's within that downloadables and 92,000, it shouldn't be an unidentifiable question. I mean, it, the whole thing was bizarre, but um, I just wanted to, to make a point that there was no reason to be unable to identify what I meant. But maybe because you wrote something else down, you misread what I wrote. You're, if you read your FOIA and look at my request, your sense is not at all what I asked for. So um, Carolyn, Carol, it was the attorney that took your email and quoted it in the oh, response good. to you. Please I did not which actually attorney, write that. Which attorney wrote that? I'll call him. Which attorney wrote that? Uh, well, our attorney is Dennis Walsh at Kleinthorpe. Okay, and Jenkins. I'll give him a call and I'll well, point it out to him and see if he could not do that in the future. Well, that will be up to the board if they want you to do that because that costs yeah, two hundred dollars an hour. We've already well, made you know what? I need this information. Board and members should if you paid him two hundred dollars and he misread this, it's an outrage. Well, okay. okay. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. But we do not allow individual trustees to contact our lawyer. That does Why? Go because uh, well, that's not our procedures. Okay. Well, who's going to contact him and let him know he made a mistake? A third party? Yeah, hold on. Susan, would you contact the lawyer once more and just uh, forward whatever Carolyn said? And I, I could try. I mean, I believe. Well, Susan. But Carolyn, but you, you sent a you sent a spreadsheet with twenty two budget categories and said, please give me the information that goes with these categories. No, I didn't. See, no, no, no. Not. This is what I said. Please provide me with the specific items and their costs that make up the budget categories attached. Twenty two words. 
Here, oh, you know Carolyn, what downloadables you, are. Yes, okay, all right. Okay. So it, it just got, if I can clarify, Carolyn, you sent two emails. That was your first email to me. Your official FOIA request is what I forwarded to Dennis Walsh, and he quoted you exactly in your FOIA request. So the FOIA request you're saying that I sent is different from the email I sent? It is. Okay, I'll, I'll have to check that. I, I could be wrong then. Is the only I'll have question, to I'll have to correct the only it. Question: What downloadables are? Is that it? No, there were twenty-two lines of twenty-two items that I needed to break down. Yeah, well, and I figured since yeah. somebody created the spreadsheet, they had the information right there. Yeah, but that that type of request should go through the board, Carolyn. You should discuss that with the board. Why? That, you don't care about the information. All right, that's not appropriate. Why waste your time? I have the board. I will mute everybody, okay? So we're gonna go back to our procedures where one person is talking, we stop, we stop until we So that level of detail has, was not provided to the board uh, during budget time, nor was requested by the board. So an individual trustee requesting that level of detail should really uh, go run through. You can roll your eyes all you want, Carolyn. But it's, this is amazing. Yes, thank you. Oh, I, my, yes, many people think I'm amazing. Um, so that level of detail really should go through the board uh, to uh, acknowledge that we agreed to have the staff um, create that level. That's, that's not what we've ever uh, asked of the staff. So we don't allow individual trustees to request that level of detail from the staff. It always goes through the board. That's our procedures. It's a, it's a board decision. Trustees do not request that level of activity from individual staff members. I was told at the last board meeting to send an email with my budget question. Absolutely. So simple. And your email uh, was uh, a level of detail. I think I responded to you. Did you get my email response to you? So am I correct in understanding level of detail means... Carolyn, did you get my email response? Yeah, it's what you're saying right now. And I'm so asking you... you have additional question. Okay. Because you want to spend $98,000 and I want to know what you're spending it on, you have a problem with the level of detail? That's just common information. You asked ask for all those budget items, Carolyn. Well, there's 89 of them that aren't explained. I only wanted 22 out of 89. Oh, just because you ramp, you just automatically vote yes, doesn't mean my request should be ignored. All right. As I said, this is a board decision. That's the library's process of a budget. I get it. I've been contesting this for five years. I got so we've it. We've gone through this every single time we have a budget discussion. I've, we've gone through and I've even documented to you where we've made a decision that we're okay with the current budget process. And okay, you're okay with it. I'm not. Well, yes, but I want to know what we're spending our money on. We're done with this level of conversation. We That's just, fine. Great. Thank you. Caddy, do you have any comments? I was just going to ask, is she requesting at, uh, names of titles or what is she requesting? I don't understand. Let's, let's, and let's, I mean, we're over with this subject anyway, so yeah, never mind. Okay. I'm sorry I asked it. Right. It's hard to explain a budget process to people who don't use a budget process. Yes, Carolyn, we're past this topic. No problem. Thank you. Great. Uh, Karen, do you have anything on this? No. Linda? No. No, thank you. Did I miss anybody? I don't believe I did. Susan, can you take a roll, please? I can. Karen. Yes. Carolyn. Um, is this um, to vote on the budget? It is voting on the um, motion to adopt Ordinance 2004. Uh, everything I said about that message. Okay, before I vote, I know if I vote, I can't talk. So can I just make a couple of comments here before I vote? No. Why? Because I want to read a statement. So once we call for a vote, then we are done making comments. All right. May I please read my statement? You no. have to make your comments when we have the comment portion. No, but I was just asking a question. Now I would like to make a comment about the budget. All right. no. Actually, a request. I don't understand why you have a problem with our procedures. 
But go ahead. And I make don't understand why you have a problem with allowing no. all of us to speak. Are you why did? is it a secret? I any more and you said no. We moved on. Pardon so, me? Uh, I didn't say no. So let, go ahead and make your comment. Thank you. It's, oh, so I wrong. just wanted to make a few points. The 2021 budget process mirrored the previous five years. An Excel spreadsheet of line items and their total spending amount was provided. No breakdown of line items detailing individual costs or analysis or justification for these items, which totaled seven million five sixty two six three three, was presented. Unlike previous years, we are facing the worst health crisis and economic downturn in our lifetime. While other library boards were proactive to reevaluate and decrease current costs and operations, the Niles main library trustees refused to do anything. Board approvals oh, for health insurance occurred by trustees without seeing the actual bid. No competitive bids were received. In addition to receiving competitive bids, our goal should be health care reform. Our expectation should be solutions provided to us for health care coverage and costs. Staff spent several months selectively soliciting envelope consultants for yet another roof replacement inspection and roof enhancements. The library publicly bid for proposals. During a pandemic and the indefinite future of the library, envelope consultants is not a necessity. Again, this reflects a lack of board oversight. The board's lack of oversight has created a breakdown in protocol and a lack of trust and integrity in our decisions by our constituents. We are all in this together as a slogan oh around God. the library. We are not all equally in this together. Many residents are out of work, unable to meet mortgage payments, suffering physically from COVID-19 or struggling emotionally because of their dire situations. I would like to make one last plea for the trustees to reconsider a freeze on hiring and capital asset projects for the coming year. In addition to offset salary increases and merit raises, please consider eliminating memberships, professional development, and travel for staff in 2020-21. Thank you. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you very much, Carolyn. Yeah, we don't appreciate it. Uh, no, we're, we're, I, we, we're at the vote problem. We're at the vote. We're at the vote, but she's not. I understand. I let her go because... Because you're too nice to her. Because I can't control anybody. That was, thank you that for was that. Not I, it. It, I know, I understand. It put it on me. It's all on me. So, uh, it, I, so since I've made this allowance for Carolyn, I'll make it for everybody else. Anybody else have another comment before they take their vote? Yes, Patty. Yes. Um, several of the things she mentioned, we have discussed. Um, so I'm a, not really agreeing with her statement. And our budget was lower than it was. We lowered it. So, you know, it's not like we went with the same budget we had last year. So if you want to criticize us, go right ahead, dear, because at least we're not grandstanders like you. All right. Thank wow. you. Very All right. Anybody else want to make a statement before? I just want to negate everything that she said, and I can't go through it all because it's too much. Thank you very much. All right. And I too have had enough of the grandstanding. And I'm not grandstanding. I'm standing Putting down the rest of the board when it's just unjustifiable. We all work hard and we look through things diligently. And that's all I have to say. Thank you very much, Carolyn, for your unwarranted conversation and everything else that you just had to say against us. All right. All right. Thank you very much. Karen, you want to join in? Uh, yeah, we do discuss these things. We spent a lot of time on them. And then Carolyn, I do believe, I, I know you're playing to the audience out here, telling everyone how thorough you are and other people aren't, but it's just not true. And, uh, you know, again, I know you're playing to the crowd out there, but it's just not true. All right. 
I'd like to respond, please. No, I do not play. No, yes. you no. cannot accuse me right. of playing I'm to the crowd. To oh, to no. you Susan, that. mute everybody, please. Me. We are going to continue on with our Carolyn. You've been muted, so you might as well stop. Uh, our, our, we're, we're done with discussion on this. We're going to our, our vote. Um, Susan, would you please restart the vote? I don't know, even know where we left off. Okay, Karen. Karen's muted. Oh yeah, everybody's muted. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Uh, would you mind reading what we, yes. where we left off with this? Because it's been such a while. On adopting ordinance 20 uh, Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Ordinance providing, okay, for the vote. Okay. Yes, uh, my vote yes. Carolyn. Carolyn said no. Diane. I vote yes. Patty. Yes. Linda. Yes. Tim. Yes. Motion passes. Great. Next item, 9B. Uh, I make a motion to approve a 3.3% increase uh, in salary for Executive Director Susan Lemke for the year 2020 slash 2021 beginning July 1st, 2020. Do I have a, a second on this one? Second. Thank you. So um, uh, I did want to state that uh, Susan hasn't had uh, a, a, a rate commensurate with the rest of the staff for a number of years now. Also, um, you know, in my opinion, he has just done an absolutely outstanding job uh, running this library through this past uh, several months with the pandemic. Uh, challenges that have never arisen before with libraries. And uh, she has risen to the level of, uh, of, of exceptionality. Uh, and I'm very proud to, to be on this board with her and I'm very proud of her work. I'm very proud of the work of the, the rest of the staff as well. So this is a, um, we had approved the 3.3% raise for the entire staff, and this is just including uh, Susan with that um, that raise. And then for the record, for everybody attending, uh, we have decreased our overall budget. We're in the area of $600,000. So that overall decrease was also due to Susan's uh, extensive um, work on identifying areas that we can um, lessen expenses. So, you know, for everybody who's, who's crying that we're spending a lot of money, we are reducing the budget um, by quite a bit. All right, um, next, uh, Diane, you wanna make a comment on this? Uh, no, I agree with um, the increase in salary for Susan. She's done a wonderful job and, and um, I approve this item. Thank you. Carolyn, wanna make a comment on this one? Uh, Carolyn, you are muted. Somebody unmute Carolyn. For... Carolyn's still muted. Carolyn, stop talking. You're muted. I know. I got to get to the button. Okay. Um, okay. No, I don't have a comment. I would like to make a friendly amendment, um, but that'll be after the vote, I assume. Correct? Uh, no, you got to have to make the amendment before the vote because we vote on it and it's finished then you can't amend a motion. Okay. All right. Um, can I, well, can I make a motion when everybody's done commenting? Okay, thank you. Uh, sure. Sure. Karen? Uh, yes. Um, I, I would like to advocate for this. Uh, it's in line with the other staff member increases. And I, I note that this, in, this um, includes the cost of living increase. I mean, some employers give a cost of living increase and then they give a separate merit increase, but this includes any cost of living increase. The cost of living in uh, this past year, I don't know, Greg, can you remind us what it was? I don't know if you know that offhand. Um, we did consider that. Greg, and you're on Yeah. You're on mute, Greg. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, cost of living uh, was 1.9%. Okay. So that... Uh, no, I'm sorry. That was... That was the, that was the previous year, 2.3%. You know, that's what I thought. That's where I thought where we came up with the 3.3. So it's really, yes. she's only getting a 1% increase. 
Excuse me. Uh, yeah. That's merit based. Only one percent more than she would otherwise make. Um, you know, I noticed that uh, you know all of our residents who maybe are receiving Social Security, they get a cost of living increase. So I think that our employees are entitled to an increase also. Um, that is at a minimum what the cost of living is. So I have no further comment on that. I, other than to say that I do think Susan's done a great job this year and has worked, I'm sure, an extraordinary number of hours given the demands that the pandemic put on her and all of her staff members too, for that matter. I, I know a lot of decisions had to be made very carefully. And in times like this, there's a lot of criticism that's levied against a person, no matter what decision they make. And that's all very hard. So uh, I just want to appreciate, or say I appreciate her work um, during the past months. I'm, I'm done, Tim. Thank you. Uh, we're gonna go around everybody's comment, then you wanted to make a- I, I wanted to make a comment. I wanted to respond to what Karen just said. Why, why don't we go through everybody in order? No, go right ahead. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, uh, Linda? Um, yes, I just want to thank Susan for her empathy, compassion, knowledge, and going the extra mile through this COVID epidemic, um, through the Black Lives Matter, making a statement to the community. And this has been a really pressing time in many different ways. Um, however, Every day brings surprises, and uh, yes, she worked hard to provide consistency to our staff and our community. So I thank you. Okay, Patty. I also appreciate everything Susan's doing and how she's stepped up, up to the plate. That's all I have to say. Thank you very much. You're welcome, Carolyn. Did you want to, uh, something additional? Oh, um, yes. Um, Susan has absolutely done an incredible job. This is a horrible year, and at least you keep smiling at every board meeting, and I appreciate all you've done. Of course, I have a completely different look at finances, but it's not a reflection on you and, and how well you work with your staff and the patrons. I did have a comment. Um, Karen, you mentioned that um, our staff is entitled to a raise since even the seniors get a cost of living raise, seniors on, are on a very, very fixed income. They may get a cost of living raise. Their insurance and medical, and, or their insurance uh, costs and their prescription costs are through the roof. So they may get a little COLA raise and they probably won't get one this year because the government's gonna freeze them. But I don't think that's a good example because our seniors are really struggling. I get calls all the time they, there aren't enough food banks that support them. So I don't think that's a good correlation, a, a working staff member to a retired person. Just wanted to clarify that. All right. Karen, did you want to respond on that one? Uh, other than I think it is, it is a good example. I mean, a lot of employees don't get uh, uh, the raises that uh, seniors have consistently gotten. And yeah, prices go up, but working people, their prices go up too. So in any event, I, I don't want to belabor that. I, I just really want to say that uh, I support the motion. Okay. All right, thank you. Carolyn, did you want to make a-, a uh, an Friendly, um, oh. yes, please. Sure. I would like to make a, oh, is it, is it my turn? It is your turn. Okay. I would like to make a friendly amendment. I motion to recommend the trustees initiate the director's goals and provide a formal evaluation process with collaboration for next year. Um, so you wanna it change? Has, it has nothing to do with the raise. I just yeah, want I to do this you in wanna, addition. You wanna add that to the addition of the wording of this? Right, I'm just concerned about having a more collaborative process for her evaluation and putting the responsibility on us to create our goals. All right, uh, um, that is, uh, uh, you know what, that's answer, okay, well, do I have a second on that? I doubt it. <laughs> okay, uh, no problem, I didn't think so. All right. I, could I just say, it, that sounds like a, a different matter, and we may or may not support that, 
but right. it just sounds like it should be a separate motion. I, I agree that that was kind of like an ancillary yeah. thing. Oh, okay. That's why I thought I was going to do this after the raise, but that's okay. All right, um, we are done. Susan, could you take uh, a, a, a roll call on that? I would be happy to. Ah! Karen. Uh, yes. Carolyn. No. Diane. Yes. But Patty. Yes. Linda. Yes. Tim. Yes. Thank you all very much. I appreciate your kind words and it means a lot to me. Well, you are very welcome. All right, so- oh, uh, Can I just also say, I, I am not opposed to working with the board on my goals. I, I think it should be a collaborative process and I don't think we probably do allow enough time for that in the course of the year. So I actually agree that I it could agree. be more of a joint thing. And I'm very happy to work with you all on that. I agree. And I have well, to say- Well, uh, I know she is. I know Susan would yes. be. So. I know. I, 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 a board meeting, um, for this topic, we really didn't work on collaborative goals. And I, actually, I agree with you on this, Carolyn. So I think um, uh, we'll have to address this. That's fine. Yeah. Does anybody remember that we already discussed this and it's in minutes from, I don't know what meeting, but I'm sure we could look back and see. Yes. And, and Carolyn was supposed to provide some initiative on uh, creating some thoughts she had about this and that's why nothing ever came of it. Yeah, we will have to address it. Well, I reconsidered that. I don't think I should tell you how to evaluate Susan. I think we should do it as a board. It's okay. not tit for tat. It's really to have a more collaborative evaluation because we don't. We don't interact with her enough. I, no, know, I, I'm, I'm not opposed to it. All right, let's, let's uh, table that for a different discussion. Okay. Okay, thanks. Sounds good. Are we at 9? Uh, we are at... 9C. Uh, uh, we Thank you, 9C. Okay, so uh, a couple of items on this. Um, and, and I want to... We've had a couple of changes. So we had... A, personally, I think we had a, a marvelous meeting last Monday on this topic. Uh, I know it was extremely long, but I think a lot of the trustees uh, developed a, 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 maybe a deeper understanding of, of what the, the project is all about, myself included, uh, and I think um, we're, maybe we're on stronger footing. Uh, uh, Karen had made a point that uh, we did, based on the, the proposals we had received, that we didn't um, really have a, a strong handle on the uh, costs that uh, BEC, I believe, and INSPECT uh, would be incurring on this project and, and, and I you know reflecting on this uh, we I agreed with her um, and I had gone back to Greg and I asked him to uh, ask me to inspect to provide more exact costs for the various phases of the project so that when we do review it again uh, we will have um, a, a, not only a minimum cost but a maximum cost so that we can have um, a balance of our, or, or what we're going to do also, uh, Carolyn had made a point uh, about an open bid for it. And, you know, Carolyn, I think you were right about this. Uh, we are also going to put out uh, an announcement, a notice, a public notice, asking right. for um, any further proposals from any other um, 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 consultants for this project. So, uh, what are you proposing? Uh, we don't know what we're doing, right? Okay. Well, Carolyn, let me finish. Okay. Get in there and ask me questions before I'm even done. All the time. So, well, you uh, drop your voice. I think you're done. Go oh, ahead. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. I, I don't know how to not do that. Uh, okay. So in, in lieu of that, Carolyn also had a point where she said, when did we agree to having... Uh, essentially, a third or, or second party um, consultant uh, run the project. And, and Carolyn, you're absolutely right. We did not make a formal motion nor uh, a discussion over whether or not to have uh, a, a party do that. So uh, at this point, I would like to make a motion that for the roofing refurbishment project, 
we utilize uh, a second party consultant to do uh, extensive analysis, uh, create uh, specification, um, help with the bid, and monitor the work mm -hmm. of the selected consultants. Can I have a second on that? And we can discuss it. Patty, all right. So I, I think we need to have a, a little bit of a discussion amongst ourselves to make sure that we're all on board with this so that we can move forward. Because Carolyn, you were right. Um, and uh, personally, I think that this is a good thing to have. Let, let you know, Carolyn had said, well, I'm just gonna hire a roofer. So let's go through that scenario. Let's say we do hire a roofer. You know, we get bids and we say, you know, we need somebody to come out. First of all, they'll have to do an, a, a forensic analysis to find out exactly what we need. So that cost for a consultant would be a wash. That, that cost is going to be, have to be done regardless. Then uh, they'll have to create their own specification. So that, that's more or less a wash. However, let's say we you know, choose somebody and they perform poorly or they use material that's not um, up to standard or they have other issues that since the staff is not roofing experts might not notice or see. And then down the road, we have issues. Clearly, members of the public would come back to us and say, why the heck didn't you get a second party to monitor their progress so that we knew it was working the way it should be working? So I think in this case, we are doggone if we do and doggone if we don't. So I think for the protection, and it's because it's such a large, it is a large project. I think for the protection of this project and for uh, uh, the level of protection to uh, ensure that it's done correctly, I think it's a great idea to go ahead and hire an expert to do the forensics analysis and then do the specification and then uh, work with the contractor. Uh, furthermore, uh, I'd like to, you know, have this project be called the uh, roof refurbishment because it is clear that it, it might not necessarily be completely replaced. And we all don't know that. We won't know that until an extensive analysis is done on this. So um, that is uh, my explanation for I'd like to move forward with having a, uh, uh, a second party um, uh, um, run the project for us, essentially. Uh, does anybody have any comments on that motion? Thank you. For me? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, when I first heard of this, these three consulting firms, I, I really thought this is unnecessary. We could do this ourselves. But after listening to them, I realized that it, they're very important to have someone like this instead of just a simple roofing contractor who might not know as much uh, about the entire building as these consultants would help us. It's important to look at the total picture. So um, yeah, I agree that we need to hire a consultant firm. Um, is this the time to mention um, we also didn't have a discussion about the uh, having a green roof or having a solar energy roof. Uh, this is not the time to have that discussion, but we could have that again at some point. Um, I thought maybe we would wait until we got some costs associated with those so that we can have more informed discussion. Um, somehow the members of the public seem to think that that's what we want, but it is not the case at all. There were just ideas that were floated and we need to find out our return on investment on solar and uh, um, obviously widespread ramifications for a green roof before any of that is completely discovered. So, uh, right, and, and that's why it, I think it's kind of important that the board makes a decision first as to yes or no before we ask the consultant to, bring, to spend time and money producing okay. specifications and amounts of money when we, if we so decide not to even go that route. All right. So let's, let's uh, table that for a, a minute and let's, okay. let's just make the decision okay. on whether or not they have the consultant, then we'll go back to those okay. two. All right. 
Carolyn, do you have any thoughts on my, my motion? Yeah, and I'm totally confused. The conversation right now is about the roof refurbishment project. That's what you're calling it? Uh, I thought we would rename it to refurbishment because no one knows whether it needs to be replaced or it needs to oh, be. Oh, no, that's fine. That's fine. So actually what you're saying is we're discussing who's going to come in and test the roof to determine where we go from here. No, I want, to make, I want to make a board determination that we need a second party to run the project for us rather than going with um, bidding out to roof consult roof roofers the way you had suggested. I see. Okay, I disagree. Oh, can I talk now? I, dis I disagree that we need an envelope consultant. And the only reason I'm saying that is because I've worked for project managers. I've worked on huge, um, I worked on the international airport um, buildings when they, were, when they were building them. I know exactly how all of this works. It's interesting that we would even entertain a um, envelope consultant. For some reason, everyone here seems to think a commercial roofing contractor consists of two men in a truck. That's not true at all. A, a, a contractor who, a roofing contractor that would work downtown that we would hire for Michigan Avenue buildings is not some little fly by night. He's extremely knowledgeable, not just about slapping on a roof, but everything else. So you're kind of, you're, you're, you're misunderstanding the qualifications of a commercial um, roofing contractor. But what you also need to know is these consultants came out and gave us three presentations and they were all terrific. Well, actually, two of them were very impressive and knowledgeable, I have to admit. But you need to find out who's actually working for them. Just because somebody's in the... Um, head of the uh, envelope um, consultant firm, does it mean that everybody under him is any more knowledgeable than the person you'll call? He's gonna call the same roofers you will. And if you're gonna get involved with a, 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 a reputable commercial roofing contractor, you're gonna have all the safeties just as if you hired an envelope consultant. But what you're doing is opening yourself to all these breakdowns of, way too many processes that are going to cost the library a fortune. There are so many licensed contractors, roofing contractors, with reputations and, and who have worked on buildings that we can't even imagine that are, are, are just as reputable as who they're going to hire. I'm just trying to figure out why we think we need to do this. And when I, when I hear everyone, we seem to downplay the knowledge of the individuals who are really out there. I'll tell you the truth, I read Inspects Communications back and forth with Greg. I am not at all impressed with the people that will be working on his project. The project manager with Inspect was merely a roofing employee. I worked for a project manager that was the, the, the most, he was the extremely knowledgeable, the most, the most knowledgeable person on the project. Every person, every subcontractor underneath him, he needed to know their expertise in order to be the project manager. It's not we, what well, you're getting here. And just because you're going to have an envelope consultant come out and oversee what people are doing, it's not a safety net. Believe me, he's not going to be watching what everybody does. It's just a GC. It's another general contractor. I strongly would like you to consider at least getting bids from these um, commercial roofing contractors. I just feel like we open ourselves up to endless spending because we don't understand that you have your safety net with a lot of other would in a lot of other directions. So I'm I'm really not for these envelope um, consultants, but I see the rest of you are. We have only had three people talk so far. So, uh, Karen, do you have any, uh, anything to say on this uh, motion? Um, you know, um, it is a lot of 
money for these envelope consultants. And I was concerned about that when I looked at the bids. I, I guess I didn't, I was sort of surprised how much it would run. But I did um, think it was interesting to hear them say that we, maybe it's not a roof that we need. Maybe it's something else, or maybe we need a roof plus something else to ensure the integrity of the envelope of the entire building. Um, and uh, I, I, I guess, you know, if we hire a roofing contractor, but it's not really the roof that's the problem, or right? that's not the only problem, uh, we really haven't cured the whole problem, or really, we really haven't protected the whole building. So, um, I, you know, I, it, it's, it is a lot of money, but I, I just want to protect the entire building. And I think that maybe that's what we need to do. But I, I don't have any more to say. Thank you. Linda? Hi, thank you. Um, yeah, I agree with uh, Karen um, also. It's not just about the roof. It's also about the waterproofing too. Um, so I really would like to um, ensure that when we do spend the money, that it is that it's responsible. And I agree with Diane. I too didn't didn't agree with hiring a um, a consultant. I was like, you know, why are we going to spend this money? It didn't make sense. I agreed with Carolyn at that point, thinking. Um, you know, why would we not just go right to the roofing company? Um, but then after listening and understanding their roles, their responsibilities, holding accountability um, to the companies and their expertise and oversight or insight of what we may need, it gave me a whole different perspective on the whole job, actually. Because I automatically think when you hire, call a roofing company, you Think there's a problem and then they're going to come in and yes slap a roof on this is not the the idea with what these guys are coming in with their expertise they are coming in and doing an evaluation and i really love that all of them were talking about looking and seeing what really is a problem with us not anyone else not any other school library building it's what we need and only doing what we need and that really um, kind of sold me on hiring one because I thought, you know what? Yeah, it sounds like a lot of money and why do we want to spend it? But wow, is that money well spent? Because you could possibly spend that money and not have to get the whole, because our building, come on, how many roofs do we have in our, we have so many different roofs. We don't have this weird one, you know, size fits all kind of, we have all these additions and so many different types of roofs. It's, you really need someone with that expertise. Anyway, um, I like that they're going to oversee the job and that, you know, um, that the, a few of them, or at least a couple of them had said that they would make sure that they weren't just going to say, oh, okay, yeah, move ahead. They wanted to come out, check, make sure that they were holding that company accountable for doing exactly what they said that they were going to do. I mean, that to me really... Because, I mean, I wouldn't know how to do it. We wouldn't know how to do it. Dave doesn't know. I mean, that's not his expertise. I mean, he might know. He could probably look it up on YouTube or something, but come on. No. Um, I like that they're holding the roofing company accountable. Someone overseeing that job is so important because, yes, it could be a lot of money, like Tim said, um, or that it's, a that it's such a large project, or it could be not so large project. That's what's awesome about this. It could make it not be that large project that and we don't know you know it sounds like it's going to be this large amount of money but we honestly don't know at this point um and um i also thought about as after listening to hear hearing what they had said i really like the local companies that know the reputable roofing companies out there we have no clue who actually has done in the past. Yes, we could hear, you know, some of their recommendations or they could have a portfolio saying, oh, this company let, or this building or I'm sorry, this school or this library liked us. But honestly, the I believe that the consultants will know 
who are the good companies that work hard, work well, that do a good job, and that actually have, do everything and have all their ducks in a row, um, and do a good job for Niles Library. So um, anyway, that's my point. I think that it's they, they did sway me with their presentations. So thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Very nice. Patty? Uh, anything I would have said has already been said. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Um, all right. Uh, okay. So, Susan, would you take the roll call on this? Can I throw one more question out there? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. In terms of the fact that we have no major problems with the roof, okay, and it, it was it was repeated by all the consultants, and it's it's been proven by our our um, our patch jobs or our two patch uh, repairs in three years. What's the rush to get involved with this right now? I mean, wouldn't it be more logical? We're not experiencing any problems. Um, if we sh if a problem should occur in the future, then get go, you know, consider having someone come out and test and then go forward. But right now, I mean, in the middle of a pandemic, and I know I keep saying that, this is a very costly project, especially the way we're, we seem to be going to go about it. Why must we do it now? I mean, we have no problems with the roof. Yeah, I just want an answer. I'm just trying to understand why it's, it's urgent that we do this now. Anyone? Um, yes, Susan. Yep. Um, I, as director, would never wait until there was a crisis with the roof. We have very fragile collections in this building. Mr. Yasso often talks about our um, our historic books and, and how valuable those are. And we certainly don't want to wait until there's a catastrophe and then respond to that. And we do have roofs that are very old. And we've been told that one of the roofs does need to be even even Mr. Dowdy in his in his message at the Monday board meeting said that that roof needed to be replaced in 2020 2021. So I I don't know why we would even consider waiting to at least get the roof looked at to get the roof analyzed and really solidly looked at with a company that would have then a path forward. So that that's my thinking on it, Carolyn. Is I don't want to wait until there's a disaster. Well, no, and I don't want you to, but, you know, the consultants kept saying, oh, you can get good, um, good repair work, you'll get another five years. So I was trying to figure out where really are we? But well, if I think it I, needs to be replaced by 2021. Right. Well, I think that's why I'm calling it a refurbishment project, because okay. we need that forensic analysis to tell us where it needs to be fixed, where it needs to be replaced, where it needs to be correct, refurbished, you know, whatever, because we don't have enough information to make that decision. And uh, I think I like the phased approach where they do the analysis, you know, then we make another decision. Do we move forward and what do we move forward with? We don't have enough knowledge. Um, and I, and I, you know, okay. you know, a, a roof needs to be replaced sooner or later. You know, we don't want to wait till water's coming up. Well, no, and going up there says we got squishy uh, insulation. I think that's a terrible thing to hear. <laughs> Linda? And, and not only that, I think that just kind of, um, again, supports us getting a consultant because this will give us a baseline of what is needed and possibly a timeline of rather being um, proactive rather than being reactive, right. to be honest. Um, so that also swayed me exactly what um, Carolyn's talking about. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you all. So let's uh, take a roll call on that motion. Um, Tim, could you, would you mind repeating the motion? Because I'm not sure everybody's entirely clear on what it is. And I am not entirely clear on what it is. It written down. Oh, no. It wasn't written? Oops. It wasn't written down. I had said it, and I'm relying on everybody's memory for it because I wrote it down. But I don't oh, that was a mistake. It is a mistake. <laughs> All right. So the motion is to engage uh, a second-party consultant 
to do the forensic analysis uh, of the roof in order to create specifications for its refurbishment where necessary, replacement where necessary, and to monitor uh, and to, to help create the bid for consultants to do this work and to monitor the progress of those consultants as the project is going through. Okay, thank you. Everybody remember that. Yeah. Karen. Oh, that's Susan. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I did not. No. But it's being recorded. Oh, I, mean, I got more of it this time. <laughs> Just a lot. All right. Karen. Karen, you're on mute. Yes. Thank you. Carolyn? No. Diane? Yes. Patty? Yes. Tim, uh, Linda? Yes. And Tim? Yes. Motion passes. All right. Tim, can okay. I just ask one question before you move on? Sure. Your terminology, second party consultant, that's an envelope consultant? However, we refer to those three people that we listen to. Okay, is so that's what you meant. Okay, that, it is them. It is all, right. I, all right, that's fine. Yes. I thought it was something else. Okay, well, got I, it. I don't know what they're called. I, I, I don't know. No, no, that's fine. I just wanted some clarity. Thanks. All right, thank you. Um, Diane, you had, uh, that was a, those are good suggestions. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, can we discuss it? I mean, it's not on the agenda. Yeah. You know? um, well, I thought this was all part of the same thing. Because I don't know. Somebody, yeah. somebody needs to me a Karen. What do you think? Um, it's. I, I'd love to have a discussion on these two items, but I'm not sure since it's not on the agenda. What? I'm sorry. What was, exactly was the suggestion? Uh, have a discuss, Diane suggested we discuss amongst the board to come up with uh, a direction on whether or not they have a green roof, and a direction on whether or not to pursue a solar panels. I mean, if we should even ask these companies to pursue specifications and I mean yeah, I don't know I thought we were going to choose work. one first we were going to choose one and yeah, then I, I kind of agree with them I don't want to I don't want to spend money I don't want to spend money on them making specifications for something we ultimately don't want right I was <laughs> hoping that you know after we choose one that we could then get some more advice from them and maybe, you know, a green roof or a solar roof would be an option. Like when someone puts in a bid, usually they put in a regular bid and then they have some optional ones that can also give you a bid for. Um, and so then we can decide, you know, if we want to take them or if we want to take the option or not. Yes, Carolyn. I think, I think, I think it's a mistake. I think we need to clarify whether we want so I agree with with Olson, sorry Diane, that we we either need to determine we're going to go with solar panels or not or what was the other one vegetation to have somebody come out and propose um, specifications it's a lot more costly needing to determine what's necessary for solar panels and where they'll be placed and all this there's a lot of extra work we need to be clear about what we want we're going to need if they're going to come out and give us a bid on a roof after identifying its condition we need to know what what they're going to do and i think we should do that initially i mean if you guys want these things i think it's it's important to know right at the beginning and you know what your direction is because we listened to three people that gave us all this yeah i know Karen, i I need to have clarification if we can even discuss this right now, since it's not on the agenda. You know, I think we can discuss anything. It's you can't vote on something if it's not on the agenda. So, and the roof is on the agenda. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, anything surrounding that topic could be discussed oh, as, okay. as an agenda item. All right. Okay, good. I'm, I'm sorry, Carolyn. I just, I just... Oh, no, no, it's fine. I'm just saying I think we need a direction. And yeah, hear more people tell us more about something we don't know if we want it. You know, I, I just feel like, wow, it's costly, it's time consuming. You're breaking up. I just think it's, I think we need to be, we need to make a decision. I, I think we do. Well, um, I would like to know 
Am I muted? No, I'm not. Okay. Um, if, you know, if it's cost effective or not, um, because certainly a solar roof could uh, pull in um, some money or save some costs. And, but I'd, I'd like to see the numbers. So I'd like to see whether or not that makes sense. Uh, as far as a green roof, I'd like to know how much that would cost. It probably isn't going to save us. Well, it might save us some cost in that it deflects some of the heat from the roof. Uh, but I'd like to know just the general cost of that too. I don't think it would cost any more. I think the, um, the well, I don't know what we're calling them, envelope specialist or whatever you call it, they would uh, drop the bids and the people who bid would bid either just to do the roof or to do solar in addition to the roof or green in addition to the roof. And they could bid for that or not bid for that as they chose. Um, so um, it wouldn't be any additional cost to us. What we would do is just decide whether or not we wanted to accept that bid or not. It doesn't cost anything for us uh, to have someone bid to do something. Okay, that's what I was questioning. If it was going to be costly for us just to find out the information, but well, I think there would be an additional cost. Yeah, my my question here is, from yeah. what I remember of them talking to us, yeah, yeah, uh, a lot of it was, is our roof going to be able to support these things? Or are, is our roof going to have to be beefed up in order to support these things? And realistically, if the roof we have now isn't beefed up enough, is it worth the extra money? I don't know that it is. Uh, actually, Greg, uh, And we can't tell that until they do the analysis. That is true. That is true. I, something I want to say about this, though, here, my opinion. Uh, the solar panels, there's a return on investment in regards to the solar panels. So it's going to cost X amount of dollars to create the infrastructure for them and to install them. Then they're going to return through decreased electrical usage. So it's, it's really a return on investment. You have to balance how much it's going to cost to do this over how much is the decrease in future um, expenditures. And we may find that it's not cost effective which is fine, and we don't do it, or it is cost effective, which then is a decision to go ahead. And as far as the vegetable roof and the green roof, you know, I'm, I'm really, I've stated it before, I'm, I'm really against that, principally because of the additional weight on the roof, mm -hmm. the additional um, um, supporting that it'll need, and more importantly, the additional staff time that will be taken up by people having to go up and, and, and monitor and support this thing. Because we do not want members of the public, volunteers, to be going up on our roof any way, shape, or form. So then this will put- Liability. Yeah, liability. This will put additional staff. And you know, I, I, I dislike boards who make decisions for themselves that then result in a lot of additional work on the staff and just put it on the agenda. <laughs> you, know, you guys go out and take it because, you know, it's, it's going to be real pretty. And, and Karen, I'm not disregarding it, you know, I'm not denigrating it, but I think it's, it's more of a vanity type project. And I'm just, myself, I, I would just vote against the, the whole green roof just from the get-go. I, I, I don't like all the work and all the effort it's going to take to do that. That's my opinion. Um, I'm sorry, I did have his, his hand up on this. Go ahead. I'm sorry, are you, call, are, are you calling on me? Yeah, you had, you had your hand. Yeah. Um, so, um, you know, where does the additional cost uh, come in? Um, I believe that each one of the firms would have to do uh, an engineering study on the, um, uh, on the roof support to make sure that obviously it could support the weight. Um, that's generally not something that's contemplated in their, uh, in their initial uh, bid for the work. Yeah. So there may be some extra there. Now, is it a significant amount? I couldn't tell you that one way or the other. Um, but you know, the way I think I understand it is they would take a look at the drawings and then they would actually um, you know, somehow stress test the drawings to make sure that they, you know, that the design is capable of, of uh, supporting this weight. We got an indication 
um, I believe it was either uh, late in 2019 or early in 2020 from a firm called Dewberry who did uh, this work out in countryside on the new municipal complex out there. And they came out and they walked on the roof and they looked at the drawings and, and what they came back to us with is the long north roof and the long south roof. So like the, uh, the south roof is the one that terminates in the, in the uh, spire on the, uh, uh, near the parking lot on Oakton. And then the long uh, stretch of roof uh, that's basically over the boardroom and over um, uh, over the administrative area and, and so forth um, could support up to 80,000 kilowatt hours, um, basically eight ninths of our uh, annual requirement. Um, now, we you know, they're not signing off on anything. It's a preliminary determination. Um, there would have to be more work to be done. Um, but, you know, what they see up there is, yeah, it's pretty likely, you know, that we could do about uh, 80,000 kilowatt hours is, is what I understand. And um, uh, that would go a long way to defraying our electrical costs. Um, and the payback would be pretty short I'm sure they're not considering everything. Okay, we spend about eighty-five to ninety thousand dollars a year at the at the rate that we're going uh, on electrical costs. So, you know, how long would it take to, you know, if those went to zero, how long would it take to, uh, you know, get that money back? Is is kind of what the question is, and the uh, uh, the life on those uh, panels is right now was somewhere between 20 and 25 years is my understanding. Um, so, I mean, that's just a little bit of additional sure. information, but I think there would be some initial costs uh, associated with make, you know, ascertaining exactly what the roof could support. Um, the uh, vegetative roof is, is a bit trickier because the, uh, uh, the load uh, from, you know, the trays or however this is constructed and, and set on the roof is just incredible. And th the most likely place that, you know, we would put it is on the sloped roof that's in between the, you know, it's the lower part of the facade that, you know, kind of terminates into the uh, parking lot uh, so that people could see it. Uh, otherwise, it would be up in the air and you know, too far for anybody to observe or anything like that. Um, and the and the truss roof that's under that uh, does not look like it can support and would, you know, probably be some pretty significant changes to it. Um, and, you know, and that's where they left it. Um, they really didn't talk about it further. So, you know, in some respects, you know, you can say, yeah, we got a roof right here where we can support it. And therefore, we should do it because the benefits are there. Um, but I think once you start making major modifications to the uh, uh, to the underlying structure, I think your costs start to you know escalate, and the uh, and the benefits start to erode pretty significantly um, if you get in you know, if you get into that. Yes, Carolyn. I just wanted to mention on Monday, when we listened to the consultants, two of them did comment on solar panels and vegetation. Um, as far as the vegetation, they mentioned that it would be problematic and maintenance was costly. So I mean, that, and, I, and that's exactly what you said, Tim. But as far as the solar panels, remember, um, I think it was Karen who questioned one of the consultants about a, um, what is it, a, a resident who mentioned um, that they would become outdated. And he did, he did state that the solar panel circuits and storage would quickly become outdated, which is something then that, what do we, that we're gonna have to consider. What do we do with it? Or, you know, although the solar panels last 25 years, 
But if everything else is outdated in a few years, I mean, we're talking costs. Yeah, that's an issue. You know, so I, I don't know. This sounds so iffy. But anyway, I just wanted to remind you that, that that's what the consultant said. All right. Uh, anybody else have any thoughts on this? All right. So I guess what I'd like to do is get a consensus. Let's, in my opinion, I think we should get, we should ask when they do their analysis to give us their uh, thoughts and recommendations and, and um, costs associated with the solar panels, because that is a money generator, you know, and, and, and it's, and it's, it's, there, there will be a period where we will recover the cost in a period where we will um, then start generating income from it. In light, but in light of what Carolyn says about the infrastructure and about the components possibly being um, um, outdated. Maybe we go the route where we create the infrastructure on the roof for possible solar panels in the future. So there's that uh, slice of it as well. So let's just, let's, have a, um, um, a consensus vote on solar, and let's just, let's just parcel it out, solar panels and vegetation. Let's have a consensus on the solar panel. Yes, Carol. One quick question. How, how can we um, ascertain the um, time it'll take for us to recoup or to, uh, to save money on solar panels? Who does that study or where do we, I mean, I, I didn't, did we have a study or, or did someone tell us that there are only 67 Sundays in Chicago? I mean, aren't there some statistics out there already? Sundays in Chicago. Pardon me? Aren't there 52 Sundays in Chicago? No, sunny days, 67 in a year, I was told. I was, I was trying to be. Oh, okay. No, but anyway, is there somehow we could find this out? I think that would be part of the analysis of whether or not to do it. Oh, when, okay. Like, All we, right. don't have, we don't have the information. Tim, I think it what, I do, what I do remember is he said the type of technology in the solar panels at this time, he actually mentioned a new type of technology that uh, process that will be in the solar panels in just a matter of years. Uh, which is something, if it's even discussed, we need to discuss and figure out from this these roofing people what, because are we going to put in something that is outdated in a short period of time? Okay, so the, the question that I think is relevant, do we want to have our consultants pursue the, the uh, design Necess necessary for solar panels or not. Let's, let's just decide if we want to pursue it or we don't want to pursue it. What do you think, Diane? If there's a, a pricely cost to this, I don't want to pursue it. I mean... Well, we don't know. It's, it's yeah, I know we don't know, but... So do we, the question it could be is, an option. I guess it could be an option and only if it was not costly, just investigating. I understand. That's the end. That is the end decision. The question is, do you as a trustee want our contractor to come up with specifications and result the cost for solar so that we can make a decision on it? That's really all I want to do. No, I'd say, I'd say no at this time. Okay. Thank you. And I, I'm, I'm going to say yes. I'd like to see what the return on investment for solar would be. Carolyn, what do you, what do you think? I'm going to say no because I think I already read a study about return on investment, but I think right now is not the time to, be, to, go, in, in, to go into solar panels. Okay. But, Thank you. Good. Yeah. Karen, what do you think on the solar panels? Um, yeah, I'd like to look into it. I'd like to see whether or not we can save money and whether or not we can actually save taxpayers money in the long run by investigating solar. Um, after we investigate it, and I think we you know, want to do a fair and full investigation, uh, we may or may not want to go with it. And if we decide we want to go with it, then I think 
that we want to put those specifications in as an option for refers to bid on that. And it actually, when I say roofers, I don't know that it's usually going to be a roofer that would install it. Probably is a separate company that would do it, which makes another reason why we need an envelope specialist because it probably would be a separate contractor. But I mean, this is certainly a good time to look into it in the sense that you want to put solar panels on after you've recently replaced your roof. I mean, you don't want to put them on just before you need a roof replaced because that's really going to cause more expensive trouble. So this is the time to look into it. And I think uh, having a consultant is good too because the solar contractors are often separate, or I think usually separate companies. Nice. All right, we're at two to two. Patty, what do you think? I personally think that, okay, fine, it's okay to investigate it, but it's a moot point if they tell us our roof would be fine with just repairs and it would last for five years. If they say it'll last for five years, six years, there again, why should we put solar panels on it? Daddy, gonna, I, I'm gonna stop you. That's why I'm not. I know the question. Is, on the, the question is specifically: I don't know. Do we have the people investigate solar or not? That's really all we're trying to decide. I understand. And uh, do you but have? I, a, good point. I have no opinion. You have no opinion. I okay. do have an opinion, but you don't want to hear it. Well, I, I hear, but you did, but you didn't answer whether or not we have them investigate it. You went further, past. I want to know what they think about the roof in general and its condition before we get it investigated about the solar panels. Okay, so you're a no. Are you a no or a yes? I guess if that means no, I'm a no. Well, I don't want to put words in your mouth. I, I'm, I, yeah. We have to- Why not? Everybody else does. No, we have to tell these people <laughs> what we want them to investigate. I mean, it's just, just it's a pretty well, simple- how, how about if, I mean, I think maybe the question should be asked, if, if the roof, if the consultant says we need a new roof, do you That's want a them to story. investigate solar? That's and, a different again, story. I would agree if, if the consultant, if the envelope consultant comes back and says, you don't need a new roof, well, then or you don't need a new roof for five years, then I would say now is not the time to put solar on because if we're going to have to rip off the roof five years from now, that would be the time to put solar on, okay. not now. So I think if the question is asked, if the consultant says we need a new roof at this time, would you want the consultant to tell us whether or not solar panels would be cost effective? Okay, yes. But not if we don't need a roof at this okay. time. I agree. That, that I, agree. Full okay. I agree with that too. Uh, Linda, do you have any thoughts on this one? Linda, you're on mute. You're on mute, Linda. Hello. Hello. Hi. <laughs> nice of you to join us. Yes, I would like to um, get the cost of solar panels. All right. Well, that was nice. All right, so we'll we'll lean towards asking the contractors to uh, uh, consider solar panels. Should we need a new roof in the section or sections that will uh, accommodate that installation? Okay, nice. Okay, second point is the vegetable or green roof solution, and it's the same question: Do we have the contractors look into infrastructure changes in order to support? that, again, should we need a new roof? Um, and my uh, opinion on this is no, because I uh, specifically don't want- You're to... breaking up. Oh, sorry. My, uh, my answer to this is no, uh, more specifically because I, I just don't want to add first the additional cost for it. Uh, I don't think it's going to give us anything in return on, on, on cost. And I specifically don't want to add to the staff's responsibilities for taking care of this. God forbid we go through all this cost and you know, five, two years from now, we've got a bunch of weeds up there and a bunch of dead plants, or whatever. You know, a bunch of, uh, you know, willow trees grow in my gutters every year because of the seeds coming. <laughs> you know, 
um, not willow trees, uh, maple trees, right? And I don't want maple trees growing up on the roof, right? We got all kinds of problems, birds' nests, you know, whatever. Uh, I think it, it it adds to a whole level of problems that you know the staff is the staff is to be running the library, not gardening, and and and, and we don't want volunteers up there. But this is my opinion. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm rarely that strong on anything, as you probably know. <laughs> but this is this is when I'm strong. So, uh, let's, uh, Karen, this was your idea, so why don't we start yeah, with you? Yeah, you know, I, I just say that I work downtown, and when you look out buildings in the loop, there are a lot of buildings that have green roofs on top of them. Mm -hmm. And these are commercial buildings. They do it only if it's, you know, cost-effective to do it. They're not doing it just for, for fun. Um, yep. And I, there are no people are not up there gardening. Uh, they plant it with sedum or something that needs very little maintenance or no maintenance. And I tried it on my own roof. I put a flat on my own roof to see if it would survive there for an entire year, and it did without me ever once walking out on the roof. Mm -hmm. So I think you, you might think it needs more maintenance than it actually will. They're designed not to have it need any maintenance. But I don't know that I'm going to convince you. I think it's a good idea. I would like to see it, but. You know, uh, again, I, I think it would be a, a great look for our library and would be wonderful for cutting down heating costs. Probably not as much as putting solar panels in. Uh, it does cut down on heating costs somewhat, but um, that's my opinion, not it. Great. Very nice. Patty? After what was said by those consultants, I would say no. Because like you said, Tim, it, it, we might have to have employees up there taking care of it, weeding, whatever. I don't know. Solar panels is one thing. Okay. I, I'm not convinced on the green roof. Yep. Thank you. Linda? Linda, you're muted. Linda, should we call 911? Hi, did you ask me something? Yes, I asked you if you had an opinion on whether or not we should pursue uh, any specifications for a green roof. My, my voice was down. Uh, can you say that again? Uh, do you have an opinion on whether or not the board should seek uh, specifications from our contractor and installing a green roof, um, uh, again, should we need a new roof? No, I disagree. I, I'm not interested. It sounded from all three that it was very expensive and that um, was worried about the weight and maintaining was also a big expense. So thank you. You're welcome. And Diane? Um, yeah, I, I don't I'm trying to figure out the purpose of a green roof. A green roof. I mean, nobody has ever said except for their own satisfaction of having it. I, I don't understand its purpose. I mean, it, it would look cool, but I don't think we need to spend the money like that. So, no. All right. Carolyn? I'm going to be another no. Um, it has a lot of drawbacks, as, you know, especially as we heard from the consultants. So, no, it's not something I'm for. Thanks. All right. Very welcome. Okay. So we have a, a clear consensus. Uh, we are going to ask our consultants, should we find that we need new roofs in the areas that would sustain solar to uh, give us their um, opinions and their specifications and their cost estimates on solar, but not on green roofs. All right, are we all, are we all good? We're all clear. Okay, thank you. You're very welcome, very good meeting. Thank you. Sorry, uh, sorry, Karen. All right, so uh, does anybody have any other other? Any other? I have no other in the other. Oh. Nope. Wait, did we decide and yes. vote on? We didn't uh, vote on which one? Vote on which one? Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. Sorry. Yeah, I had said that uh, we had asked them to come back with more specific costs for each phase. Okay. Oh, I thought you had that now. I thought no, 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 no. No, we just had the okay. meeting. 
So then yeah, we're maybe, probably, you know, you, maybe you got it. You, you had it for us or something. And Greg was going <laughs> to give us a little presentation <laughs> right now. Here, you know? Unfortunately, I'm you're probably anxious to yeah. vote on this. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. The song and dance, huh? Uh, uh, I, I, I imagine we're going to have to have, yeah. unfortunately, have to have another special meeting when we do get that information so that we can, um, again, um, you know, consider it and come to a, a decision. Well, we're not going to pick a specific per, um, company? We are. Yeah. He, you want more info on money. I'm, hold on, Carolyn. Uh, Diane, <laughs> no, we're not, we not choosing a specific company. Tonight. Tonight, we're not doing that. Oh, we're not. Okay. All right, Carolyn. If possible, when you schedule another special meeting, could it not be a day before a board meeting? That's a good it's idea. Tough. It was two days. <laughs> That's it was two days. Was two days. I felt like I woke up yesterday and I said, I tomorrow's a meeting? Not the same week. I'm sorry. You know, our, the problem with the roof refurbishment is that time is ticking and our, our window. I understand. No, if you, I get it. It's yeah. fine. So. All right. Uh, is there any other other? Yes. Yes, Pat. I have two um, that I've been thinking about quite a bit. Okay. I would like to know if we could get, we, the board members, can get a list of the cost it takes to fill out the FOIAs. I'm curious. Because I, I know we get a lot of FOIAs, and I'm curious what it costs for, for them to be, the work to be done. I saw the one from Mr. McCula, and he paid 170 some dollars for it, which was cool. But, you know, I'm just curious. Uh, Susan, is that something that's uh, easily ascertained? Uh, well, I have gotten five FOIA requests from two people over the last two days. So this is a good time to look at that. Um, I have already spent several hours on one of them. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think, I think it is worth looking at. Greg and I actually even debated whether we should ask you to increase the legal line for this year because we went over a little bit last year, partly because of that. And um, so yeah, I mean, I think it's, I think it's worth saying, but the, the fact is that However much it costs, citizens have a right to ask these oh, questions. Oh, and, and I'm not saying that. But yep. if our legal budget needs to be increased, and be, believe me, I see how many FOIAs are coming in, maybe that's something that needs to be done. Because we need to protect uh, the, you know, you need to talk to those people. In order know, I, I think it might be worthwhile to break out that cost so that Taxpayers can see how much money the district has to spend on FOIA responses. Um, you know. yeah. as, a, as, as, as being an open organization, the uh, right. public should be aware of what's going on with that. Transparency. Transparency. Thank you, Diane. I was looking for the word. We All can right. do that. Okay. Eddie, you had a second one? Yes. This one might be a little touchier. But this is one that I've been thinking about for a long time. And I'm tired of being quiet about it, so I'm going to voice it. Go, girl. I feel since we give residents a time limit when they can talk for so much time, I think we should give board members a time limit on a subject and then let other board members talk, and then they can come back to it, but not to just go on for an hour and a half on one thing. I think so, it's fair to the other board members. I think it's sure. something we should consider. So what I would suggest then is that uh, you look at our board procedures for, um, for, the, the, um, for what we've agreed as our, as our board to um, discuss topics and that you make a motion uh, as to what you feel uh, that change should be in regard to this, uh, this topic. So that then we can um, have a, a regular discussion about it and it would be open to the public as well. So um, if you wanna put that on for next month's agenda, I am more than Fine. Happy. I don't know how it would be worded though, but I think we should say, okay, 
when you are asked to talk or you are talking, you're only allowed to talk for say three minutes until another person can talk. Then after everybody is done talking, if you want to say something else, you can say it, but not just go on and on and on and not let anybody else talk. Again, um, just the way you worded it, um, what the wording in that, I can make a motion to change it and we'll, uh, we'll have our go around and we'll discuss it. And then we can discuss it. If it, ha it has to be a motion first. Yes, okay. how we should approach that. Fine, then let's please put it on the agenda because I think this is something that's really been getting on my last nerve. I don't, your last nerve? I agree. Holy cats. Yes, so what is this figure? Oh, yeah. <laughs> This figure, see, it's not the middle All right. one. <laughs> All right, that'll be an, ad an agenda item for next meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> do I have a motion to adjourn this meeting? Yes. So moved. Great. Second. Okay. Motion and Karen seconded. All right. Uh, thank you, uh, Susan. Can I have a roll call? Aaron. Yes. Carolyn. Yes. Diane. Yes. Patty. Yes. Linda. Yes. Tim. Yes. All right. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. This is a great meeting. Appreciate it all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next one. Thank you all. Okay. Bye bye. It's bye. nice to be leaving at nine. Yes, it's um, I know. Isn't this what nice? about our next meeting? Are you just going to send out an email about the next meeting? Of, of, of a, uh, a special board meeting for the next? Uh, yeah. Yeah. It, when we get information that uh, is able for us to. Um, okay. All right. Just we need plenty of notice. That's all. With you. We're still going to okay. be on these Zooms for a while? Oh, absolutely. Okay. All right. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.